Yo guys, what's going on? It's Decroft back here, back from Thanksgiving, you know. Didn't have the show last week just because of Thanksgiving and everything. But I personally had a great Thanksgiving. I was able to see a ton of the family that I hadn't seen in a while. Plus, you know, Thanksgiving, I just always love that holiday. In terms of being able to watch football, basically the entirety of Thursday. And then on Sunday, you get to do the same thing all over again. But we have our second game against the 49ers this year earlier in the year we already had you know the 49ers club champion earl come on to the show so for the second episode of this we do have a different guest here today now this guy is super young he's one of the youngest ever madden champions that there is and he is 16 years old he is a junior in high school and i know a lot of people think that you know some of these people you know, they are in school, you know, they do Madden full time or they're older when they start really getting into Madden. Dusty, who is on here today, is a perfect example of one of the young up and comers in the Madden community. And he had a ton of success last year. So last year there was essentially challenger events, you know, clubs was obviously the huge event. You know, that was Dusty's first ever tournament and he wasn't able to really get going early in the year. But he did end up competing in these challengers, which there was four of them, and he ended up winning one of those challengers. So, Dusty, with that being said, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Just looking forward to see my 49ers play this weekend. Yeah, no, so Dusty is also a 49ers fan. Now, we've talked about it a little bit. Dusty actually didn't do 49ers club last year. He ended up actually doing Colts club. And, you know, Dusty was actually one of the players. I was going to be super excited to see if he was going to be that future 49ers club champion. Because when you looked at clubs, you know, there was always the opportunity to essentially, you know, claim a team and, you know, have that ability to always be that team's club champion. But what ended up happening, you know, we didn't end up having the club championship this upcoming year. So Dusty never got that opportunity because clubs, you know, the 49ers club specifically, I believe it had a different champion for the four consecutive years that it was a, um, that clubs was a thing. So, you know, a lot of different winners in it, you know, Earl 49er was always one of the more consistent, you know, making the event, but he was only able to win it one of the years. Um, so early here in the game too. So Dusty too, talking about, you know, this upcoming game you know is a lot different in terms of a lot of matchups you know the seahawks and the 49ers have played in years past you know typically this is like a huge game for both teams when it comes to playoff implications everything a little bit different this year you know the seahawks hoping to get something going towards the end of the season here but in terms of you what are you exactly kind of like looking for for the 49ers for this upcoming game um well the 49ers they're like really trying to make a push for the playoffs mm -hmm. which they have an opportunity so I just want to see if they can continue the success, run a little bit of a winning streak, just keep it going against the Seahawks who are struggling right now. I think it's a good opportunity. Yeah, 100%. 49ers, you know, I'm actually kind of surprised that you guys have stuck with Jimmy G for so long. You know, we talked a lot about this with uh, 49er Earl when he was on here. And we kind of both agreed that, you know, that at that time when they played earlier in the year, that, you know, Trey Lance should probably start getting some, like, considerations to be the starter. But Jimmy G has honestly looked a lot better as the season's gone on. He's kind of done everything that you guys have needed to. So are you cool with, you know, sticking with that choice of keeping Jimmy G as the starter for the rest of the year? Honestly, in my opinion, I would like to see uh, Trey Lance just mm -hmm. to see if he can get some momentum going into next year where I think he'll be the starting quarterback the whole year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's the future. But um, Jimmy G is definitely solid. I think he's definitely very suitable to start for the Niners. Yeah, so with that being said, so like let's just say that, you know, you guys do put in Trey Lance and try to develop him a little bit more, and then you guys, you know, maybe go on a bit of a, like a losing streak or lose a couple of games. Would you be okay knowing that maybe that this year isn't a playoff year if it meant the development of Trey Lance was maybe expedited a little bit faster? Yeah, no, that would definitely be fine because I think the 49ers are in a position a couple of years down the road with some of the young talent that we have. Mm -hmm. where we could definitely be competing for a Super Bowl. Right now, we're a little bit kind of away from that. So maybe spending time developing would be worth it. Mm -hmm. Pushing over here. Hopefully we will have a laser here. Oh, contain defense. Get out, Russ. Oh, we're going to have to throw that one away right there. But yeah, also just, you know, talking a little bit more about the matchup for this upcoming weekend i think one of the best players in the league right now and just young talents in the league too is nick bosa you know losing him 
basically all of last year to that torn ACL. You know, is Nick Bosa like, you know, in your opinion, a potential defensive player of the year candidate? Um, I don't know about that. I think he's definitely one of the best defensive players, but I, th I feel like there could be some better options this year. Mm -hmm. I think what's his um, Trayvon Diggs played really good this year, and there's some other players. Yeah, Trayvon Diggs has been really good this year. I think another one that's up there too right now is Miles Garrett. I think Miles Garrett has had a really, really good just year in general. I think when you look at that award too, that you know it does kind of lean towards you know those teams that are you know playing better and. When it comes to MVP, it's normally the best or the quarterback on the best team. You know, when it comes to defensive player of the year, I just feel like it's always, you know, those teams that have been, you know, in the spotlight the entire year. And I just don't think you can necessarily say that about the 49ers for the entirety of the year. Granted, the Browns the last couple of weeks haven't been probably as good as they would have liked to be. But, you know, when it comes to like the 49ers, they're really just starting to hit their stride where, you know, they're starting to gain like a national level of attention right now to the point where, you know, their players are probably going to start being considered for awards here. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of the players uh, coming back from injury helps a lot for the 49ers. Mm -hmm. um, they've been kind of banged up the entire year. So, yeah, definitely some more opportunities now. Yeah, and I think that was really the story of your guys' season last year was that, you know, everybody was getting hurt. And that was almost like a lost year, you know, coming off the Super Bowl appearance, you know, really high hopes for that next year. But nobody was really just able to stay healthy that year. Jimmy G going down with an injury. George Kittle was out with an injury for most of the year, too. And then this is kind of, you know, the first year since their Super Bowl that they have been able to be fully healthy again. Definitely. Yeah, George Kittle, um, after coming back, has played, like, really good, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, and talking about just past um, options that you guys have right now, what would you say about Debo Samuel? You know, talking about, you know, best players at their position, I think Debo Samuel, just for this year specifically, definitely has the argument of being one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Obviously, Cooper Cup is probably the best receiver in terms of a statistical standpoint right now, in terms of what he has done this year. But I've been, like, really impressed with, like, the growth of Debo in terms of, like, what he has done this year. Another player that was hurt last year, too. Definitely, yeah. He's always had that um, rack part of his game where he can get a lot of yards after the catch. But I feel like he's really, like, developed um, the rest of his game, like, along. He's played really good this year. Yeah, no, definitely a lot better in terms of just like a pass catcher this year, a route runner too. You know, so much is talked about him, you know, as like he's like built like a running back and the way like Kyle Shanahan honestly has been using him the last couple of weeks has basically been like a running back. Because you guys see, by the way, basically every single play right now, Nick Bosa is shedding me as he is able to get the sack right there. I think we are going to end up going for this, play this a little bit more aggressive right here but no Debo Samuel has been in my opinion probably the most improved player from this year to last year and it's just really you know how Kyle Shanahan has been able to use him and a lot of how he's been able to be used is through you know the run game and now it's actually to the point where Kyle Shanahan is actually just lining him up at running back and allowing him to get touches that way too yeah, absolutely, especially with uh, Moster and his injury. It opened up opportunities for Debo Samuel to take over. So you guys see a super laser right there by Russ. And now I know you're a little bit younger, Dusty, so I don't know if you actually remember this. It's probably one of my fonder moments of being a Seahawks fan, though. Do you happen to remember the 2013 NFC Championship game by any chance? Um, I'm trying to think, was that the Sherman pick? Yeah, the Sherman tip. Yeah, pick. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the tip pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I remember that, unfortunately. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah no definitely <laughs> yeah. so but on a more positive note what would you say is like one of your you know like better memories as like a 49ers fan I honestly feel like if I was a 49ers fan that 2019 season was probably like just so special up until like the Super Bowl because you guys you know throughout that entire year did just look so dominant and one of the best teams in the NFC definitely yeah I really um I would say the playoff game where we had there in 2019 against the Packers. I feel like that was probably my favorite moment as a 49ers fan. We just completely dominated them the entire game. Looked really good. Yeah, and I know as a Seahawks fan, personally, you were definitely, ooh, 
Oh, George Kittle almost able to make a play right there. But I definitely know as a 49ers fan right there, you were definitely probably scared of playing the Seahawks instead of the Packers. Because earlier in that year, I know that the 49ers did happen to blow out the Packers. And I was really hoping that we were going to able to see a game three between those two teams. Because you had, you know, the end of the year where we ended up getting stopped on the one yard line to have you guys clinch the division. And then we had that game at your guys' place where we hit a game-winning field goal with like zero seconds left in OT, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, the, yeah, those were really good games. I believe that when the Seahawks beat the 49ers, that, would, that gave us um, our first loss of the season. Yeah, so yes, 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 really I do remember game. that. Because mm -hmm. I believe we were 7-1 and one and you guys were 8-0 and oh at the time. Did you guys see who Dunlap almost yeah. able to get pressure right there? Let me sub in Wagner. I'm not sure why Wagner isn't on the field right now. I must be in like... A special package right now where's Wagner there he is <laughs> but yeah no the 49ers and the Seahawks just have had you know so many great games over the years I'm um, definitely am hoping that we are able to see that again this weekend too <laughs> Oh, Diggs needs to get there, though. You guys are seeing right now, though, that Trey Lance is actually in our game for Madden. And the reason why we do have this set up like this is because when 49er was on earlier this year, Earl, um, he was a really big... He loves Trey Lance. He's probably the biggest Trey Lance fan that there is in for anybody in the Madden community and any probably 49ers fan. He thinks Trey Lance is a superstar in the making, as you guys see Debo Samuel go Debo. up top right there but niner essentially just wanted me to make trey lance the starter and it looks like the computer up until this point has actually kept him as the starter here too and you know i wouldn't actually be surprised if we saw trey lance because as a 49ers fan you've probably seen this bits and pieces where trey lance actually does come onto the field for probably like two or three snaps whether it be a direct snap you know just like a read option whatever it may be in terms of being able to get him the ball because he really is a lot more than just a quarterback definitely yeah i think he um adds a nice little fold into the game plan it, even in like the red zone for example where you can give a running threat from the quarterback mm -hmm. there's something for the defense to worry about yeah and this actually brings up like an interesting topic in terms of you know the trey lance pick trading up three first rounders to go and get him would you have rather stayed at 12, ended up taking Mac Jones, or do you like the decision of going up and getting Trey Lance? Honestly, I feel like we could have just stayed at 12 and taken either Justin Fields or Mac Jones there. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was a little bit of a waste, honestly, trading yeah. up to number three, where Lance was projected to be like near the end of the top 10, where I feel like mm -hmm. we, we got him a little bit too high, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I'm kind of definitely leaning on the side that I, I think that like giving up three first rounders for him, it was definitely a, a lot in my opinion. I definitely like understand the thought process behind it and why you guys would have wanted to do it. But in, in my opinion, personally, I think that just looking at what Mac Jones could be for you guys or what Justin Fields could be for you guys. I personally will say, you know, I'm not like a draft expert by any means, but I really like Justin Fields in terms of coming out of college. I actually probably would have taken him second overall if I was the Jets. You know, obviously, these NFL teams do way more research than I do. But just from the simple eye test and being a fan, as you guys see crazy pressure right there. For us able to get out and throw it away though i personally actually think i would have considered taking justin fields at second i think that in terms of what he was able to do at georgia which is super impressive to me but i know that you know zach wilson is super talented too in terms of what he's able to do i think that there is five very good quarterbacks in this draft this year though and i think part of it too you know is the fact that you do have Mac Jones, who probably looks like the best rookie quarterback right now. But I think like a big thing to like just remember about that too is that he definitely is in like the best win now situation. Going to Bill Belichick, they had a super similar quarterback in terms of Tom Brady and what he was able to do during his time there. And, you know, Mac Jones kind of just obviously not playing anywhere near to the level of Tom Brady and what he was doing. But he is doing that, you know, same thing in terms of not making the mistake to lose a game, you know, playing like really well as a game manager where a lot of these other rookie quarterbacks are having to do a lot more in terms of that. Yeah, absolutely. He's in a really good spot. He doesn't, he doesn't have to do too much. Like you said, almost like as a game manager, but I think that's perfect for Mac Jones right now mm -hmm. as he starts to develop into the future years. 
Yeah, 100%. I think it's obviously, when you look at a quarterback's rookie years, you know, you know, Peyton Manning threw something like 30 picks his rookie year. So I really don't think that there's a ton you can judge off of a quarterback's rookie year. And you just really have to give, you know, especially with the quarterback position, just a, a little bit of time to see how they progress throughout their time. I think the most recent one is Patrick Mahomes, who actually spent an entire year behind Alex Smith before he was ended up being the starter. Yeah, absolutely. And it paid off for the Chiefs, mm -hmm. um, having the homes learn behind uh, Alex Smith really turned out well, oh, of course. Gerald Everett. I thought we threw a super laser right there. I think we are actually going to end up kicking our three right here. But yeah, 100%, you know, looking at that decision was the right decision by the Chiefs. I ended up just sitting. I think I might have missed this. Oh my goodness. I'm so used to focus kicker. Essentially that focus kicker allows that kick meter that you guys see to go a little bit slower right there. And I really thought that it was going to go slower. I'm just so used to having that ability and not that super fast ability right there. But yeah, no, Mahomes sitting him, I think was definitely the right decision looking back on it. And I know it's probably the same thing that the 49ers are looking at Trey Lance right now, in terms of just sitting him and giving him a little bit of time. Was well, going to be the same thing that the Bears was going to do with Justin Fields too, but they ended up bringing him in a lot earlier than I think that they had anticipated. But going more to like the Madden side of it, Dusty, now, you know, youngest Madden champion that there is in terms of that challenger that you competed in last year. I also wanted to ask kind of like, how do you view that? Do you view that personally as like a championship? Because I know a lot of people in the Madden community, you know, we value our belts a ton and that that wasn't technically a belt, but it was a huge, huge, oh, as you guys see Jordan Brooks force a fumble right there and I would pick it up. But it was obviously one of the bigger tournaments last year that you could compete in. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of people like have asterisks next to it because it was a smaller tournament than most of the majors. Yeah. But honestly, I, it, it definitely like should be counted in my opinion. It's like a mm -hmm. big win, just because you know there's still a lot of money on the line and a lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of good players in that tournament too. It was really nice to get that victory out. Yeah, definitely. And talking about like the players that you played, you know, I personally remember that you played Clef in the final and that you played Schemen in the final four, who are two very established, you know, MCS players, Clef competing in this last Thanksgiving tournament. And then you had Schemen, you know, have that really good Madden 20 and just as a really respected opponent across the entirety of the competitive community. But who else exactly, you know, through that path, did you end up having to play? Um, my win, my win, uh, to make it to the live event was Nick Hacko. Mm -hmm. And then the games before that I had to play Spoto and I had to play crush. And I also mm -hmm. had to play the three time Steeler champion deliverance. Yeah. So I definitely had a really hard road to make the finals. Yeah. Win. Basically everybody right there that he did just lift off, list off by the way, has actually been a club champion. And actually it's not every single person that he just listed was a club champion at one point or another. So that's a really just impressive, you know, run to go through. And I think like a big thing about these tournaments too, is that, you know, that entire tournament was single elimination. And it started at 512, if I remember correctly, Dusty, or was it 256? I think it was... I, I think it was 512. It was 512, yeah. I was gonna say. So remember that there's 512 people that qualified for this tournament. So how many rounds is that? So 512, 256. Um, 128. It was a lot. <laughs> 64, 32. Um, hold on, we're going to have to snap a play right here. So 32 is five rounds. Chris Carson gets stopped right there. So 32, um, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2. So nine rounds. I believe it's nine rounds. Tell me in the comments if I am wrong, but I do believe it's nine rounds that Dusty did end up having to get through. And by the way, if you guys do like this content, make sure you guys do like and subscribe. You know, bringing you guys this throughout the rest of the year. I think we have five weeks after this episode on here. And if you guys do like this, if you guys leave a like, and obviously at the end of this, leave your comment for your score predictions. And if you could also hit that subscribe, it's free to do, doesn't cost anything, and it would really mean a lot to the growth of this being a thing going forward. Uh, but yeah, no, so going back to that, Dusty went through nine rounds of single elimination. You lose one of those games, you are just out of the tournament. So I think it's definitely, you know, for anybody to win any of those tournaments, it's just so, so difficult. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing that I love about the tournaments this year with the MCS is that they're doubly limb. So like you can slip up once and still have opportunities to win. 
Yeah, I think stuff very nice. I think double then has to be viewed by everybody really just as a great thing. I think, you know, looking at it as a, from a competitor, it just gives you that, you know, potential to realize, okay, even if I have one bad game, I understand, you know, I can just make up for it. You know, no harm, no foul, just losing one game. I just know I have to play perfect the rest of the way. You know, last year it really was, you know, no double elimination. Really in any of the tournaments, now granted clubs in the online phase of it was single elimination. Or excuse me, was double elimination. But once you got to the final 64, everything else was um, single elimination for the rest of the year. So definitely like just really, really good to see, you know, this format be a double elim. Yeah, of course. I think it's really popular around the community, too. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of complaints about the format. Ooh, I thought Wagner was going to be It'll... able to get there. You got to see Kittle there. They can play. And I will say, for any people that do play fantasy in here, I don't know if you play fantasy, Dusty. We can talk about it here in a second. But I actually do have George Kittle on my fantasy team. So if the 49ers happen to score any points this week, you know, at least have it beat a George Kittle. I would be okay if George Kittle was to score to get my fantasy team some extra points. But I will say, I think I am in the playoffs in like the main fantasy league that I am in. So if George Kittle also wants to have a little bit of a down week, I think this is this is the best week for him to have it. Oh my yeah. goodness, an end around to Debo. This is Bobby Wagner making a play right there. Hey, like you said earlier, he's built like a running back. Mm -hmm. Had to showcase the skills there. Yeah, in terms of like linebackers, you're seeing like two really good linebackers out on the field uh, this week between, you know, Fred Warner and Bobby Wagner. Would you say that Fred Warner has probably passed Bobby Wagner as the best linebacker? Or do you um, think Bobby Wagner is still the best linebacker in the league? For me personally, I, I really do believe that Wagner is still the best linebacker in this league. Um, I honestly think that, uh, what's his, uh, Fred Warner could be uh, viewed better than Wagner now. I feel like mm -hmm. as Wagner has gone old, older, um, uh, Fred Warner has passed him, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there we go. Oh, DJ Reed. Jamal almost able to make a play right there. Okay. Hmm. Have to get a stop right here. And this is actually where the Seahawks defense has been like one of the better defenses in the league this year. Just overall, like red zone possessions. Granted, we're not at the red zone quite yet, still another eight yards before we get there. But, you know, down here, it's actually very rare. Teams are scoring, as you guys see, though. Right there, Dusty is able to throw a super laser. I think that is going to take us down to the two minute warning right here. Now, this is going to be interesting, you know. I don't know if I'm gonna end up taking my timeouts right here. I think I think I'm what I'm gonna personally do. Wait on the first down play, end up seeing what happens. Looks like oh, it's a keeper. Oh no, it's a screen. Get outside. Get outside. Okay, that's a good tackle by Cindy Jones. I think I'm gonna let this first one run out here. Yeah, I definitely. I, I think I'm gonna save my timeout for here and then use the my timeouts the rest of the way personally. Bring Jamal in the box. Outside. You guys see right there, able to get an easy score. The reason why I didn't take my timeout right there was just in case I got a goal line stay and Dusty would just have a little bit less time in case he did end up getting the ball back. And I still think, honestly, getting one point in this situation is going to be fairly straightforward in this match. And hopefully I didn't just jinx myself. Um, Dusty, by any chance, did you happen to watch the last Seahawks game, though? The Seahawks-Washington uh, football team game? Yeah, I watched a little bit of that with uh, the two-point conversion there at the end. Yeah, the that was that was honestly Washington. a crazy game to, to watch as a Seahawks fan. You know, I think throughout most of the game, you know, our offense, you know, looked a little bit sluggish at the times, but at the final drive, you know, Russ doing what Russ does, puts together a drive. And then it looks like all hope is honestly lost at the end of the game. But it turns out that we end up actually recovering the onside kick, which I really thought at that point, like, wow, we're actually going to have a chance to win this game. As you guys see right there, that's why I think Bobby Wagner is better than George Kittle. I think <laughs> Wagner makes the play. Hey, that was a close one. <laughs> I, I think Wagner makes the play right there. But no, I thought, you know, onside kicks so rare to get. You know, they rarely ever get recovered in this league. I would have been stunned if we were able to get one. 
Um, but it turns out we end up getting it, and then it just turns out there is a illegal formation that we end up having. Oh, as we have DK deep right there. I'm gonna take our first timeout right here. Um, hmm. Okay, that actually puts us in a tricky spot here right now. Trying to probably get to the 40-yard line to give Jason Myers at least a chance to make a game-tying field goal. Um, hmm. I'm going to go to this right here. So what, 40-yard line, we need like another 30-ish yards. You guys see right there, the pressure. Oh, when I take a sack right there, I cannot do that. That is really bad by me. Third and 30 right now. I actually played this really bad. That clock had a crazy runoff. I didn't think the clock, I should have probably actually taken my time out after that play. I didn't think the clock was going to have that. And I honestly knew I had my check down right there, but I honestly got greedy and I just wanted a bigger play down the field. All right. Able to roll out. Am I able to gain half of it back? No. Oh, I don't know. Gain half of it back right here. Now, in all honesty, I don't have a play for this situation, but I have an idea for this situation. I see it. <laughs> all right. Even AC, like, we don't even need just the first down here. We need more than that. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, and I messed up the play. That's a horrible timeout. Hopefully nobody copies my clock management that I've used for this game right here. All right, I still have a play, though. Honestly, that play was designed not to be inbound, so. I just, ah, why did he change his route? Okay. All right, I believe in Russ. All right, everybody's blitzing. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have a chance. No! no. Oh, yes, we okay. get illegal touching. It didn't look like we even got our feet down inbounds anyways i'm actually gonna have to look at this back again i actually thought we had a super laser right there but, i thought i almost got last you know, appearance that was close <laughs> like most seahawks 49ers game it does end up actually coming down to really what was the final play here oh d eskridge oh, i just looks like it looks like yeah right there if you guys see on the replay right here it looks like his left foot just goes out of bounds there first it's hard to kind of tell from this angle. He definitely does. Oh, no. He ends up dropping it, too. I thought he caught it. My bad to everybody here. Dusty's able to kneel it out, though, and end up get, getting the win in this game. Just a really bad drive for me, honestly, on that last drive. But, Dusty, we always end these with a score prediction. So, what was your score prediction for this upcoming game? Um, I think the 49ers are going to take the dub. I think it will be around 21-17. to 17. 49ers winning okay and so the last time i was on here which was i believe the packers game i tried to reverse jinx it because i've always had the seahawks winning every single game so i tried to say that the seahawks were going to end up getting blown out against the packers and we actually did so i was actually right so i'm assuming that i'm going to be right when i actually pick the seahawks to win again this week i think it's going to be low scoring again i actually kind of like your score prediction of 21 17 I don't think it's going to be much higher scoring than that. But I'm just going to go a little bit higher than that. I think it's going to be 24-20 to the Seahawks for this upcoming game. But with that being said, I do really appreciate you being on here today, Dusty. And I do appreciate everybody that has tuned into this far in. Do make sure you leave your score predictions in the comments below. Make sure you guys do like and subscribe. And with that being said, I will see you guys all next week.